Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and we're back today for part two of our tour of the moon. Now, as you recall in our first episode, we talked mostly about the northeastern seas and we had a half moon. Now, as you see, we've got pretty much a full moon and we're gonna go over the rest of the major features. So let's cue up the music and get going. You know, before we get started, let's go over something that we had from our last episode, and that is the concept of the rabbit in the moon. A lot of people had a little trouble visualizing it, so let me see if I can point it out for you. Now, if you have a look at the dark areas or the mare or the seas of the moon, you can see they form kind of a shape. Traditionally, in the West, we talk about the man in the moon, but in the East, they talk about the rabbit in the moon. So here is the rabbit's breast and his belly coming down to his feet. His feet are kind of curled up behind him. This is his tail area right here and his back. Then you see his head and he's got one ear here and he's got a second ear here. And then he's got his head and his snout right there. And there's the rabbit. Now we can use this outline of a rabbit to kind of identify the different mare or seas of the moon. Now let's go over the ones that we went over in the first episode. Now here at the rabbit's snout, we have the sea of serenity. At the top of his head, the sea of tranquility. This is the sea of fertility, the first ear. And the second ear is the sea of nectar. This little body right out here is the Sea of Crisis. Now those are the ones that we went over in the first episode. But now that we have a full moon, we can see the other side a little bit better. Now we'll recall that this is the north side of the moon. This is the south side. Over here by Jermali is the west. And over here by the Sea of Crisis is the east. Now, when we look at the western side of the moon, there are three major seas that I want to point out real quickly. Now, near the north of the moon, we have the Frigid Sea. And that's this dark area right up here. Just below it, in this area, we have the Sea of Showers. And that is right above the ocean of storms. So we've got the frigid sea here. We have the sea of showers and we have the ocean of storms. Now in this area, we have a series of small or minor seas and let me point them out for you real quick. This area in here is called the sea of vapors. Now this round area that kind of looks like the Sea of Crisis, which is behind my head, is known as the Sea of Moisture. Likewise, this area over here is called the Sea of Clouds. And this area up in here is known as the Sea of Islands. Now, as apparently they started running out of names, they called this area right here the sea that has become known. Now in our next episode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to point out some of the major craters and mountain ranges that are visible from the Earth. Now the mare or the seas can be seen very clearly with the naked eye. You can pick out some of the major craters and mountain ranges with some low power optics or binoculars. And that'll be the subject of our next episode. However, just for interest, I thought it would be nice to kind of point out where the Apollo landing sites were. Now, in the future, I'm going to do an entire series on the surveys of the Apollo landing sites on the moon and what we can and cannot see from the Earth. But I thought I would just point out where they were. So when you look up at the moon, you can say, ah, that's where Apollo 11 landed. So let's go over them real quick. Now, Apollo 11, of course, landed in the Sea of Tranquility, down here at the southern aspects, near this little range of mountains. 
Now, Apollo 13, of course, had a problem on the way to the moon. It did orbit the moon, but it didn't land. Apollo 12 and Apollo 14, however, landed over by the Sea of Islands. And you can see their locations right here, just south of the crater Copernicus. Apollo 15 landed up by the crater Archimedes in this chain of mountains. And this is technically the Sea of Showers, but it's on the border with the Sea of Serenity. Apollo 16 landed in the Lunar Highlands and not far from the Apollo 11 landing site. Now, the final Apollo mission, Apollo 17, landed by this little outcropping of mountains in the Sea of Serenity. Now, of interest, I actually saw Apollo 17 launch from Florida. It was quite a sight, so I remember that mission very well. Now, in future episodes, I'd like to actually have a look at all of these Apollo sites from the Earth, look at the geography of the area, and then see if we can actually pick out the sites from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. Now, most amateur telescopes have got a resolving power on the order of one arc second. And at the distance to the moon, that's over two kilometers. That would be about 50 times larger than the detail that we would need to see to actually be able to pick out the Apollo landing sites from Earth using a telescope. But fortunately, we have the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, and it has very detailed images of all the Apollo landing sites and a number of other very interesting features on the moon as well. So I hope you'll take a few minutes and join me later this week as we go over the major mountain ranges and the craters of the moon. And then we're going to try and put it all into context by looking at the Apollo landing sites. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this short video. Remember, hit that like and subscribe button for this channel and maybe watch a couple of the other videos. We need the view time to get going. We're going to do some really cool stuff with this channel. So this is Bob the Science Guy, signing out from Northern Michigan. Thanks again for stopping by and we'll see you again soon.